All right. Well, without further ado, I just said that, but now we're on air. Uh, welcome back, Devil. Thanks Devil. for having me. Um, last time we, ooh, shoot, I'm using different a uh, different headset this time, so I got to get used to the aux cord on it. Uh, but um, but last time we were just saying there was a little bit of a audio, not for the first forty minutes, but like the afterwards, we so a lot of it got cut out because of the the connection error and i think a lot of that comes from the fact that we're on two different continents so yeah yeah probably a big thing but yeah so i mean if someone did listen to our episode they should know who you are but other than that you know go ahead and introduce yourself who you are what you do things like that okay cool well um i'm devil dalare um animator and director from south africa um we do a lot of music videos and shorts and that's about it. <laughs> just just taking it one animation at a time. Recently, like yesterday or the day before, I dropped a new thing on Instagram, a little peep animation, which has blown up. Like it did better than anything I've posted on Instagram before. And that was in like 24 hours. So, so that was pretty exciting. Hopefully going to make some more rapper animations and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I always like your rapper animations too. And then your guys' YouTube channel, it doesn't focus on horror, but that's like a main thing that you guys do on your YouTube page. Right? Yeah, yeah. Horror. Yeah, like a lot of like horror tunes. Um, we've been like kind of every now and again, if there's a game worth animating, we'll like jump on a game. Or we recently did um, Godzilla vs. Kong, the movie parody that. Um, we also, I think like two months ago, we launched a Spanish channel where we are doing all of our videos, but completely dubbed to Spanish. And like, that's also been doing pretty well because our second big, apart from the US, our biggest uh, audience is Spanish. So that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so you guys, the number one audience is US? Yeah, yeah, US like. I feel like any any country, you know, including the US, you always want to uh, attract the US um, population because of how consumer driven the United States citizens are. Like um, yeah. we make the reason our economy or the economy runs so like is so capitalist and so smoothly and you could say smoothly, but it's because people consume like the middle class consume so much, you know, we are so consumer driven. And I don't know if you could say the same about everyone else in the world, you know? Yeah, and I, but I also just think like grow, everyone kind of grows up with Western like um, American movies and American shows and all the media we consume is from America. So like it's just, it just makes sense to when you create something or like for me personally, like um, when creating content, I'm not trying to create content for a specific group of people or like a specific demographic. I'm just making what I want to make and Growing up, like I said, with a lot of U.S. Um, entertainment and just like stuff that probably like really influenced it as well. Yeah, I think, and especially just being an American myself, you know, I think Drake said it the best. 7 a.m. in Germany, can't believe that they heard of me. I think we forget when we're like entertainers in the United States, forget like other countries really do take a, a liking to American culture and American music, like you were saying, movies, things like that. Because like, even when I check my statistics on my podcast, like other countries are like high up there. Like one time I was like, Chile was my second most Finland. And I was like, what? And I was like, why are people from all these other countries so attracted to American um, lifestyle? And I think it is right what you're saying. I think it is because um, the whole world grows up with this American culture kind of with them. And yeah. so it's almost like becomes a world kind of um, entertainment in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, that like, that definitely adds up because um, I'm also like constantly, whenever I check um, demographics from where most of the views and stuff is coming in from, it's also like every now and again, there'd be like Australia or places like that. And you don't, it, it, it's kind of obvious, but you don't really expect other countries to know of what you're doing or like, like you were saying about American music, for for example, like you wouldn't expect people in Korea to be bumping Drake or like Post Malone or something, but there's like huge cult followings and stuff for that. Um, especially I've seen with like Lil Peep, for example, like Lil Peep is like huge also in like Spanish market, Brazil and stuff like that, which is just like, you, you'd expect people to kind of uh, listen to to their more like cultured music and stuff which is 
kind of hypocritical because I don't do that either. <laughs> like American music and American movies and stuff is always great. But the UK has also been like coming into like the music scene and stuff like really hard lately. So. Well, the UK has always had popular artists, I feel like, but a lot of them come to America. Like you could think of One yeah. Direction of the modern day. Harry Styles is like extremely huge. Or like the Beatles, for example. The Beatles blew up and came to the United States. Um, I think it's because of um, LA and just like the um, this fantasy that all the movies and all the music and everything is just always building around LA. So a lot of artists and people feel like they need to go to LA to kind of make it. And then most of the time it's the opposite of that because it's crazy expensive and some things you can just do from wherever you are. You don't need to technically go get like a super expensive small ass apartment in LA to follow your dream. Yeah. For sure. I'd still like, like to go to LA though. <laughs> have you never been? No, no, I've never left South Africa, but I'd really like oh, yeah. to visit America at some point. Yeah. I think we did talk about that last time. Yeah, dude, yeah. I was just down. I So I'm in Vegas again. I mean, I live in Oregon, but I'm down in Vegas says so that's where I'm born and raised. But I just drove to my, my sister lives in San Diego. So I was down in San Diego and, and at the beach. And then I went up to LA for um, at the beaches down there. And I spent Sunday and then I drove back. Um, LA is cool. Southern California is really cool because everything's like an hour away from everything really. Um, yeah. and you can go to the beach, you can go to like LA, San Diego, you can go to, um, Bakersfield, which is more kind of like, um, middle, middle, Southern, middle Southern California. I don't necessarily like the Cali lifestyle. It's too packed for me. There's too many people. Um, you can say the same about New York too. Like, the American dream kind of is like, if you want to make it in entertainment, like you were saying, not necessarily like theater, but you want to make it in like music. You want to make it in like acting, things like that. You go to LA. And if you want to make it on like wall street, making money and stuff like that, owning businesses, you go to New York. Yeah. You want to be a big time lawyer. You want to be a big time doctor in New York, you know? So it's like, there's two American dreams in these two major hubs of the world. And I feel like people from other countries always go there if they want to make it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they, they don't always know how just sometimes it's like just unnecessary or just like New York, for example, I, um, before lockdown, I, want, I went, wanted to plan a trip to New York or to like LA or something. So it's just looking at Airbnb prices and stuff. And in New York, the prices for a bed, like one bedroom, like super small flat is insane. <laughs> like it's like two, two and a half grand, like, and that's just like, that's the cheapest, like smallest places. And uh, I don't know. Personally, I'm just like, I'll go live on like some farm life, just chilling by my, like, like you said, like the whole crammed lifestyle, just, it's not for me. I'd go do it as like a tourist attraction thing, go take my picture in Times Square or whatever, but I, I don't see myself living in such a tight space with so many people. I like people but not too much people. I like living in, I liked Vegas is growing exponentially right now. And it's kind of pissing me off because I don't like traffic, but I like people, you know, I like when there's a good, like a million, there's a good ratio, like a million people to a 2 million people, nothing compared to LA and New York, you know, New York yeah. and LA are insane. Um, I think there's like 11 million people in New York. I could be wrong, but I think that's true. And it's like, dude, no one wants to live with 11 million people. Um, I, I've been thinking about going to law school in Texas and at UT Austin because one, it's a good law school. And two, it's like Austin is booming right now. Texas is booming and it's so cheap to have such a nice ass house. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was checking out um, the one artist I follow, Dayglo. He is also, um, I think he relocated to Austin, Texas, just because the um, music and entertainment scene currently there. So like booming and all these like, up and coming artists are there and it's just like it's cool that things are shifting to just like you were saying it's not just LA and New York anymore but now like Texas mm -hmm. might be like and Vegas like growing and everything like that so Vegas has always been booming as in like a tourist place but never yeah. really a living the the major hubs that are like booming right now Boise Idaho I mean, Miami's always been huge. Miami is, is a lot of New Yorkers are going to Miami. Um, and then Austin, Texas. Because, uh, you know, there is something to be said. Like, those, those coastal cities, everyone likes living on the coast. But, like, the prices for things in California is insane. I just spent four forty nine dollars on a gallon of gas 
Um, one, um, I spent fifty dollars on a hybrid Camry just to drive back four hours to to La- Las Vegas. It was insane, and and nobody wants to live like that. And under our current president, like it just seems like it's not going to get better. And so, you know, we talked about this last time. And so it's like it's becoming this thing where. Like people are trying to move inward because like all the coastal cities like New York, Miami, I don't really know if Miami's that bad, so I don't want to speak on it, but like New York, LA, like nobody wants to live there. And I just have a quick question, a little digression. What kind of yeah. currency do you guys use in South Africa? Um, we have the South African Rand, which is about, uh, I think it's like 14 rands for a dollar at this point. So it's like, it's definitely not a strong currency, but it's also sometimes it, it it can be stronger it can be weaker but not the greatest it's um but we tend to um when it comes to working all our clients and stuff pay us in us dollar because it's just universally the best to work with um so yeah yeah so you you say the us dollar is universally the best one to work with you would think like the yeah. euro would be right because the european union uses it yeah yeah but um just a lot of clients and um like our network and YouTube and everything, which is based in America. So it's, it's hard sometimes asking American clients to pay you in Euro and then there's conversion fees and it's, it's just like an unnecessary process. Yeah, so I least, think, no, what were you gonna say? No, no, I was just gonna say PayPal at least makes it super easy instead of like doing the whole Swift bank account thing and then you have to go, yeah, that's just, that's a whole different mission. Yeah, it seems like one of the problems with um, America being the center of like, you know, entertainment and like you said, even apps is that sort of TikTok was Chinese is that, you know, they want US dollars, you know, or they want, um, you have to conform to the Americans like wishes almost to do business through them. And so like using English, like, I mean, I guess there are some Spanish kind of things now, maybe you can change to different languages but i think english is still the like number one on every app um it's the most spoken language in the world i think chinese is next but you know it is like because america was the liberal world order for so long english the dollar i think became so strong because everyone wanted to conform to the american society you know but i do yeah. think you know there china is booming right now dude china is i hate the chinese not the chinese people not racist but i hate china yeah, because of how the communism and yeah. well how like yeah. like the acts against humanity and like and you know no one really like ever talks about it like like they just want money and China's got a lot of it. But if China, if, if the switch goes from the American, um, you know, leading the economy, leading the world, you know, to China, I think there could be a lot of damages to like censorship and things like that. And we're already seeing censorship in America. Yeah. But like just on China, um, again, they, they banned crypto recently and that's what sent everything like going heavy down. And did you see the whole, um, drama with john cena and the new fast and furious movie in china no i didn't what happened it was like this huge thing where uh just everyone was hating on john cena because he may he w- went uh for an interview for the new fast and furious movie and then he called hong kong its own country which it technically is but then china itself got upset with him because they're like no hong kong and all of this is part of China and everything. And then he apologized. And then everyone was upset about him for apologizing. Cause they're like, Oh, you're just doing this. Like you were saying for the money. And because the mo- American movie market is so big in China, he just doesn't want to piss off China. So he kind of put the people second and the movie and like the possible income it could make first. So yeah, just the left, the right, everyone was kind of just hating on John Cena. Yeah. In China, dude, it's like you said, they, with the American um, movies, they, they censored the American movies so heavy. If they don't like it, they, they will not let people see it. And dude, I am like, I've studied, I study um, communism and Marxism for a couple of years now writing my um, senior thesis on the Soviet Union under Marxism. And it was such a dangerous ideology that led to the, the deaths of millions upon millions of people in Soviet Russia and, and Maoist China. And it's continuing to happen in China. And we don't talk about it enough because China is so powerful. We do not talk about how they, are, they threw their billionaire, Jack Ma, 
in prison because he was pushing democratic ideology. Like, like we, we get so worried about the way Americans work and stuff like that. But th- for us to be able to have th- the first amendment, which is freedom of speech, if you don't know, freedom of press, freedom of uh, religion, to have that is so fundamental to the principles of like living democratically and living f- in, in liberality that we forget that other countries and other like normal citizens within those countries are so detrimentally um, not detrimentally. They're they're held down so detrimentally by th- their own governments. It's 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 crazy. Yeah, no, dude. Like even uh, Dubai. I don't know how well you read up on Dubai, but that it's like such a big tourist destination and also such a big like um, economic hub. But they treat their people so horribly. Like the the king of Dubai actually kidnapped his own daughter that was trying to flee the country, and no one has seen her for like years now. Like that's just messed up. And then you still get people going there, fucking taking their pictures, being like, oh, Dubai is such a great place. But clearly it's it's just not. And like China, for example, with uh, when the Mulan movie came out, there was uh, such a big backlash because they still have concentration camps in China where they, um, yeah, they just like sweatshop, like making people work, like abusing them and, Everyone's just like, oh, no, it's fine. China's in charge. Fucking, we don't want to lose money. So to hell with human rights. Yeah, man. Money runs the world. Money is who can have it. Power, money and power. Because, I mean, you would think too, they go hand in hand, but they necess- they don't necessarily go hand in hand. Um, and too much know. ambition. <laughs> no, what were you going to say? Uh, no, I was saying, and too much ambition. Like, ambition is a good thing, but once you start like stepping on people to get where you want to go then you really just need to reflect on what you're trying to accomplish that's one of the flaws of american capitalism is that it's so efficient and doing exactly what it's supposed to do (laughs) innovating things creating things getting people to the top but it's really good at kicking people down when they're already down you know uh have you ever heard of the Pareto distribution uh no no so it's a it's a it's a economic distribution that basically says that as you, as you start to succeed, you succeed faster and faster and faster. And as you start to fail, you fail faster and faster and faster. Same thing with losing and winning. And it's something that happens in all aspects of life. Um, it's why the game of monopoly works. You know, if you start a monopoly, everyone has the same and then you end with every one person having everything. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. That's how capitalism works. It's the, and it's, it's, but it, people like to attribute that like people like Marx like to attribute that to capitalism itself, but it's not just capitalism because it happens in every aspect of life, not just, not just um, competitive economic competitiveness. And yeah. so the Pareto distribution shows why the competitiveness of human humanity and the, the differences in humans shows that if you start to succeed, you succeed faster and faster and faster. And if you start to fail, you fail faster and faster and faster, which is why People always say, if you fail, it's good because then you can switch your dynamic. Um, if you stay, if you fail in the same and then you fail again in the same, you're not learning, you're not growing. That's just insanity, you know, doing the same yeah. thing over and over again, ex- expecting a different result. But if you start succeeding doing the same thing, don't fix it if it's not broken. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a big ideology that I like is like, don't fix something that isn't broken. Because usually when you end up changing something up, that doesn't need to and you're on that trajectory it can just like completely mess up where you were projected to go but i think also in like today's just day and age we've um just kind of romanticized this intense grind like obviously grinding is great and like working is fantastic but i feel like sometimes people like gary v for example and shit like they just so many young impressionable people are watching them and if you're constantly telling them like oh like the grind is all that matters like oh don't complain if you don't work hard like a lot of people just start kind of not thinking about the other things except the success the money like don't spend time with the family or the friends because like work and like the hustle is all that it's about and I feel like that's just like a kind of dangerous mentality as well because um, 
yeah, if you just also work all your whole life and you end up getting there, whether you fall or you stay there, but if you didn't spend time with people or you didn't create more memories, now you're just someone at the top with money and nothing else to show for it. So capitalism, <laughs> it's just fucking horrible, man. Everything's horrible. We don't, we're all humans. We're all imperfect. We don't know what we're doing. We're just trying to figure it out. Well, we were all yeah. monkeys at one point. I was just telling, I was just telling, uh, my virologist friend, Kenneth Hutchinson. Have you ever heard of the drunken monkey hypothesis? It sounds familiar, but I can't recall it right now. What? I just talked about this. So if you're listening to this podcast, I'm sorry. Um, it's basically where uh, a long time ago, uh, like a long time ago, one of our ancestors had this mutation that let us eat fermented fruit that fell on the ground. And so that's why we can get drunk, basically. And it makes you think. We're all fucking monkeys, dude. One day, a long time ago, not one day, a long time ago, we were swinging in trees and we came down and we started getting drunk and now we're here, right? Like, we're all just the same. Evolution's the craziest thing, dude. (laughs) Like, just, just, yeah. Did you know, like, whales used to, they were in the water and then they got out of the water and then they realized, oh, all our food is in the water. So they went back and now they're whales and they're fish again. (laughs) Like... They think dolphins and humans were like one in the same at one point, and then dolphins got back in the water. That's why they say dolphins are like the, their IQ is so high, and that we shouldn't be keeping them in Sea World um, uh, because sea they're World so smart. Sea World is Sea World is, is Sea World still a thing in America? I think so, dude. I, I really do. I, I actually, I, I, I really do think it is. It's slowing it, down, and a lot of people are like understand it, but dude. Did you watch the Blackfish documentary about it? I did not. Dude, you should definitely watch that. I think it won like Academy Award for like best documentary some year or something, but it's just about SeaWorld and how they're like capturing these like whales and like just keeping them in such small spaces and they're just dying because <laughs> they're not supposed to be there. And like the, they end up killing the trainers and stuff because they're not supposed to be in these confined spaces. And, Oh, no, it's, it's like, I definitely recommend watching that. You'll end up hating SeaWorld so much more. I hate SeaWorld, dude. And especially since we understand, we're starting to learn how smart, um, not, uh, we can get into that too, how smart dolphins and orcas are. And, you know, another thing to be said about, I love pork and I love bacon, but pigs are also, pigs are smarter than dogs. They're saying, yeah, no. Yeah, they're saying that pigs have the IQ of a six-year-old girl, like not girl, six-year-old daughter or like a kid. You know, they have the IQ of a six-year-old son or daughter, a kid. And that is. That's probably why um, with Neuralink, Elon Musk is using pigs to test Neuralink on. So that, that probably adds up to why. But if, there's also a new uh, documentary, Seaspiracy. I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't heard like, of it. Yeah. Oh, it's also like, I'm, I'm not a big seafood fan to start with. Like I don't eat seafood, but that just made me feel better about not eating seafood because apparently all um, sea safe or safe fishing products, they actually aren't like the main company that's supposed to be like, the companies are paying them to put the logo of like, oh, these are like sustainable fishing or whatever. The company doesn't follow up to see if it's sustainable fishing. Apparently, more sea turtles and dolphins and things die from fishing yeah. than from plastic and straws. But everyone was like, holy shit, guys, we need to start using metal straws, paper straws. Like, It's insane. The world's cruel. <laughs> the world's cruel, yeah. and it's all just for money. <laughs> you know, back to evolution, though. What I yeah. just don't understand is why we're the only thing that is just conscious and can like, like, I don't know, dude. I don't want to say that we're the only thing that's conscious, but we're the only thing that can, Oh dude, I don't know how to frame this because it's really hard to deal. What is consciousness? Cause we don't even know what it is, you know, but we can manifest and change our environment. And that's the way that we say that we're conscious, but like, why are we these beings who care about the moment and can understand they're going to die one day. You know, when did that happen? We don't know, dude. We don't know why we dream. We don't know why we wake up every morning and we think, and we have internal thoughts. Think about this. Just think about this. I'm going to blow your mind real quick. 
you could have a conversation with everybody, not everybody. You could have a conversation every day with somebody for about eight hours a day, right? And it still will not be added up at the end of where your life to how much you've talked to yourself. Yeah, I know that. And that, that's, that's a weird thing. Just, um, that is count. That's talk. Speaking to yourself count when it's like internal, you know, and even just when you speak externally, but you're speaking your internal thoughts to yourself, does that also count as it's just, yeah. The human brain is just, it blows my mind. <laughs> like The power of the human brain is fascinating. Like placebo effects and how they work. And sometimes placebos even work. If you tell them it's a placebo, you're like, I know this is a placebo and they take it and it still works sometimes. And like group, um, what's it called? Group psychosis where one person has something or they start to feel something now like this whole group of people in like a town or environment are just like experiencing the same things even though they might not be ill or they might not actually have an issue but it's just like yeah no what were you gonna say no say what finish what you're gonna say oh no i was just gonna say it's just uh that thing of like people kind of feeding off each other's like energy without like uh, yeah that's why buddhism and stuff is just like i wonder all the different cultures. I feel like every culture has like a bit of understanding towards the ideology of like what it is to be a per- like a human and a person. And like everyone just kind of ran with it. But if we take bits and pieces of all cultures, we'd be able to understand people better. If that oh, makes sense. No, it does make sense. Like think about this, the dancing plague of 1518 in France. Yes. When everyone just danced and like, hundreds of people just danced until they died and they dance yeah they dance themselves to death <laughs> no they think that there was some mass hysteria or there was like a there was a disease or something but think about this everyone listening right now and you think about this hundreds of people starting with one person danced until they died in france in the 1500s that's less than 500 years ago actually that's more than 500 years ago that's 500 and three years ago but think about that for a second think about hundreds of people dancing in the streets until they died like what what, like what even is that dude like if we think about that today we're like oh that would never happen to us except now we've been in a mask pandemic for how long now and you're thinking one the influence of one person and, and one thing a virus the influence of one virus can make everything change yeah, it like changes the course of just like, like I'm sure COVID just in general changed the whole course of where we're as like humanity was going. Like, like I, I know me personally, I'm like prior, I was very big on uh, still washing the hands and like don't cough on people, obviously. <laughs> but like after the pandemic, just so much like more cautious about like health and fucking protecting yourself and stuff like i think even after getting the vaccination i'll like mask it for a while you know just... so Matt, i walked in to get a bang shout out bang uh-huh. i just gave him a free 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 sponsorship or a free shout out um but i walked into the gas station to get that and no one was wearing a mask and i was wearing a mask i was like do i not have to wear this and they were like no and i was like all right and i was like that's cool <laughs> um i think the mask minute in the united states ends on june 1st so that's like two days but i digress the the, like you said covid changed the course of you know the way humans are um like the way humanity was going to go think about this for a second think about how different human life would be if if things like mushrooms and marijuana natural like and even like peyote and those natural like psychedelic kind of things were never um scrutinized and banned you know like we alcohol the most i think alcohol kills more people than any other drug in the world right yeah alcohol yeah no for sure yes yeah. alcohol, i mean whether it's like drunk driving or it's yeah. just liver failure or something but yeah, yeah. alcohol is definitely worse like alcohol is is legal and marijuana is finally starting to at least in america it's finally starting to get that little push because they realize it's not even that bad 
but these psychedelic chemical chemicals, because how powerful they are and how they change your consciousness so much. Imagine how different we would be if they were, if we could say, if people could safely have taken those for all of time, we would, I feel like people would be in touch with like humanity more and maybe like the, the things like SeaWorld wouldn't have existed. That's actually very true. But I, I feel like if it wasn't like, it would be cool if it was more of like a controlled substance, like, um, cannabis now in America with dispensaries and stuff where you can get a safe amount and like they're sort of more or less like, oh, follow these rules when you do it. But I feel like if it was kind of just an open market, like so many, especially when you're like young and like an adolescent, your brain is still developing. If you did like psychedelics or something like that, that could really like mess you up in the long run. Mm -hmm. But I definitely feel like in small amounts and just like, controlled environment it could definitely like south africa now is um working on uh not legalizing but checking out uh sh magic mushrooms and stuff for medical use and for therapeutic use so that's that's kind of what i mean like steps like that where it's not just a bunch of people that want to go do acid that burning man or something but it's like for the actual like better of your mental health or because there's people that microdose on like lsd and stuff that says it's like really helped their depression and stuff but then you also get people that have taken way too much lsd and then got stuck in a yeah like and there's something to be, be sad about being safe with anything but you see how even like me and you thinking about it we think like oh it's almost like this like un you feel like different when we're talking about it, it's like, oh, it's this topic that's like heated, but it shouldn't be that heated because it is something it's non-lethal or at least if it's, it's not lethal at a, a, a good amount. I don't even think it's lethal at all, but we, we like these ancient cultures, like we always wonder how did they build the pyramids or like, why do these people were so in touch with everything? Why could they do things? It's like, dude, they were using so much psychedelics all the time. <laughs> like they, now, granted, I've never had any experiences my with my myself, but you know, just reading up about it, talking to people who have, it's like there is something that exists, like here in consciousness, that is not necessarily the physical, the body. Take a little digression on this. It's the argument, the philosophical argument, the mind versus body. Are we a mind in a body? Are we a mind and a body? Or are we a body body that has a mind? And one of my things that I think that we're a mind in a body is have you ever had a twitch, right? Like maybe your eyes twitching and you can't control it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you think about it, but you can't control it. Think about that. Your body is a vessel that you do not control. There's so many things going on here, keeping your heart beating, keeping you breathing. If you had to think about beating your heart and think about breathing, humans would have died off a long time ago. Yeah. There's, there's so much that keeps you existing that, we live up here, dude. We, and we don't live in all this. We don't, maybe we yeah. have a cramp or something, you know, but we are a mind in a body, I think. Yeah. Like, I feel like our body is kind of just there to, like the brain is like the, the main essence, like your personality, every, everything you are is like in your, in your brain is that your fundamental who you are. And the body is just kind of to get you from point A to point B just keep your brain like fed and healthy because <laughs> um like i wonder if we'll get to a point where brain transplants is a thing and which brings me to the point of if that becomes a thing will you be able to exist in a different body because i mean like your personality and your memories and everything that makes you you is your brain technically and would you, if brain transplants are possible, would you get a transplant when you're old to get put in like a robot's body or something? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't know if I'm going to want to live forever, you know, not in like a weird melancholy way, but like, I don't know, like I want to enjoy life. Life is so enjoyable because it's finite, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But also going back to something you said, right. There's a crazy thing about like that they do with like little little babies or young people like really young who are having like a lot of seizures, they cut the brain in half where they're having the seizures and they take it out and they, and they, they develop and they're fine. The other half takes on the, the half that was cut out. Right. Now let's say they put that other side of the brain in another person's body. Shout out Vsauce. I saw this on there, <laughs> but would those people be different people? Right. Or, 
Just think would it, it like? No, say say what you're gonna say. No, no, no. I'm just thinking like, like, would it be the same person, or because it's such a young individual, the brain will kind of just develop as its own being? If you think about it, if you think about it, like it's so hard because are we, you can take it one step further. Are we a mind in a body, but are we a consciousness in a mind, you know? Yeah. Like that, that just brings me back to um, different cultures and the whole um, reincarnation thing, for example, where people believe your, or just a whole ideology, ideology of your spirit or your energy never really goes away after you die because i mean like energy can't be destroyed I, I, I feel like the human mind is just set up where we're trying to understand these things that we can't understand and we're amazed by it constantly <laughs> the fact that we people existed and like learned things and they created this knowledge and they created ideas and they created beautiful songs and beautiful artworks is is one of the reasons that life fascinates me is because we all don't know anything if we the smartest person to ever exist i've said this before but the smartest person to have ever existed knew nothing on the cosmic level comparative to what we what we think no no yeah like Me learning about Abraham Lincoln has no recollection on anything to deal with what the cosmic sphere has to deal with. Like, and I don't know if you, I don't want to, uh, are you atheist? Uh, more like agnostic ish. Okay. See, cause yeah. I have a problem with atheists and my bone to pick with them is that you, you can't say anything is anything is real. Like you can't say for sure God does not exist because how the hell do you know, dude? Like, yeah it's it, it's like the com- it's kind of the even though atheists think they're the opposite of religion but it's more or less the same thing because you're denying the thing that the other people are so faithful about existing so more or less you both are just being like i think i know what's happening and that's why i'm like personally just more like i like the agnostic route of like I can't say that there isn't a bigger power, but at the same time, I can't say there is like, just yeah. gotta don't be a shitty person. <laughs> and to, to, a, to an extent, that's a religion in its own self. You know, I would call myself religious and Christian because I value the, or I hold the Christian values near and dear to my heart. The way I live, I think it makes me a better person. And I like believing in something. And I definitely believe in God, which I call the higher power that has a, you know, a, a humanistic plan for me in my life. Yeah. And I like all those things. And, you know, I don't want to force anyone else to believe anything, you know, but I would call myself religious in that fashion. But yeah. I, you know, I think a lot of people are religious who don't know they're religious because religion is really just holding something higher than yourself to a high value, yeah. you know, and holding yourself to those standards. That's a religion. That's all religion is. Now, when we start talking about like religion as in, you know, monotheistic and things like that. Um, there are dangers to religion, organized religion. And when you, when you kill other people for believing something, it becomes very detrimental. Christians have done it. Uh, Muslims have done it. We see, you know, there's been a lot of persecution of, of um, people who believe something, which is one of the reasons America was founded and why the first amendment exists. But, you know, I think a lot of people, I think the I think the majority of people today are religious. They just call it spiritual, you know, or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But I think a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people that exist today, especially in the younger generations, think that there might there is a higher power than themselves. Yeah. Um. Like personally, like I grew up um, Christian, and I would still say like I am Christian, but I don't like. Like you get, those, just people that take things to the extreme, you know, like uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, for example, like that again? the, the uh, West, Westboro Baptist Church. Isn't, I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's like this church in America. That's just uh, super racist, super homophobic. Really? You know, yeah. Like they're, they're like crazy, <laughs> but um, just think like things like that tend to, I feel like steer people that possibly could have, been religious they feel like now they're being judged by these people where christianity for example is actually very a loving religion 
but you get those people that are like, oh, the Bible says this, and for that reason, they're homophobic now, or like, oh, like people just interpret things they want to, or they interpret religion their way, and that sometimes, then they expect other people to also go with what they are just taking from it, even though that's, I mean, at the end of the day, the Bible, the Quran, like religion in general is open, I feel like, to interpretation. Like, otherwise, we'll just end up with religions, like you said, just killing or abusing people for not following their rules. But no, 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 that's, that's about my, my. I was my just thought. gonna say, um, that's one of the, the, um, I don't know if I want to say problems, but that's one of the limits of the human mind, right? It's we are limited to our own bias, you know, to our own experiences. Um, and sometimes if you take the deterministic philosophical view, those, those uh, experiences aren't even our own doing, you know, I have the, I have the under interpretation that life does have cause and effect but we still do have free will, you know? So determinism, if you take it to extreme, it's like everything you're, you're living with was determined by, a, you can go back to the Big Bang, you know? But I think that, yes, things do have a causation, but you can still change it regardless of your situation, right? Especially in a free society. Now, there are really limits to what you can and cannot do. But I like to believe that this, the system around us, right, is built or the universe for example is built to where things cause other things but they don't determine things i don't i'm sorry this is very metaphysical but like let's say i slap you in the face we're not even sitting across each other let's say i slap (laughs) you in the face you'll have a hand mark or a pain right here that's a cause and effect right yeah but you decide if you slap me back or if you're like okay why did you do that you know you decide what's the next step right yeah I like to believe that the universe works like that and that we have these paths that are, we are kind of being pushed down, but we get to decide which way we go on that path. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Like, um, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like, uh, problems can arise in your life, but you can just choose how you handle it. Um, yeah, no, like it's, it's also just sometimes uh, people that aren't okay with people having different ideologies or people having different, just people being different than them. I feel like a lot of people try and force down their opinions and be like, oh, you need to think like I do. And we're kind of with cancel culture and things as well. Like, I feel like it's a thing on both the left and the right. It's just such a, everyone wants everyone to think like them, but no one's just like, hey guys, as long as you're not, having like a negative impact on society or other people like just do your thing like hate is so based on you're different than me i don't like it instead of like oh you're different than me that's interesting let's talk about it or something like that (laughs) so in america there's a big anti-white movement especially anti-white men movement um do you feel that way in south africa I, i don't know like I feel like it's a very touchy subject. And at the same time, I'm like, I I can see how some people feel that way, but at the same time, like, it's just a tough one. Like, I don't feel like I have, even though I'm a straight white male, I don't feel like I have really much, I I haven't been hated on for being a guy (laughs) or like being like, you know, like, I, I, it's mostly just people online that are like, oh, straight white males this or, but like, in general, there's not like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't really have too much of a experience of that, you know, but I have seen it online, especially in America nowadays. The, I think the problem with the whole thing is the, the, the main problem with um, doing that is that especially male and the white really doesn't have anything to do with it. It does, but it, cause it makes them not like who they are. But I, I think the problem with it is, is men need testosterone to be a man. If you want to like, 
I'm not going any in, into the trans transition. That's your choice. I'm talking about like if we're talking about a biological man and a biological woman who are who identify as cis. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For, for, I have a lot of Oregon people that I know, so I don't want to offend anybody. But I digress. If if you're a straight man, you need testosterone to feel okay, to not feel depressed, to feel like a man. You know, that's that's the part of being a man is having testosterone, working out, being strong. That's part of being a man. Um, and when you're telling men there's nothing good about being a man and you should effeminate or feminize them, you know, and pushing this on young boys, so having Harry Styles wearing a dress on the cover of a magazine. Now, I don't have a problem with Harry Styles wearing a dress. I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with looking like Aquaman or wanting to look like Aquaman or Captain America when you're a boy, you know? You don't yeah. have to want to wear a dress. It doesn't make you a prejudiced white man if you don't want to wear a dress as a man, you know? Yeah. No, no, I can definitely see that. Like, it's, um, I feel like it just kind of comes back to, like, don't force people to kind of what you believe. Like, you can have guys wearing a dress or you can have guys fucking, I don't know, wearing football shirts and shorts. I don't know. But, like, telling people they need to do the one, otherwise they're not good or they're not, like, open or accepted or anything that's like that's just wrong again like like harry like yeah there's nothing wrong with if you're a guy wearing a dress but to tell all guys that you need to do that i can see your point like that's it's back to that individual individuality point like if someone's not hurting you dude let them do whoever they, whatever they want let them fuck whoever they want let them date whoever they want let them do whoever they want let them be whoever i want one of my yeah. favorite artists Trav um not Travis Scott. Travis Scott has never worn a dress, I don't think. <laughs> young, young Thug, his Jeffrey album, he's in a dress. I listen to that album. I see no problem with that. Kid Cudi even, he wore a dress at SNL, I think like three or four SNLs ago. He wore uh -huh. like a dress for his, yeah, for his like, I think final performance. See, now me, I'm like, all right, that's a little weird. But like, I don't care. Do it. It's cool. If you, if you can flex like that, it is, it is a – no, I do understand the point that it is masculine to be able to like show people that and still be okay in yourself. That does have some masculine energy into it. But not everyone doesn't have to do that. Post Malone, has, Post Malone might do it though, but he doesn't have to have <laughs> an address, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if he doesn't, that doesn't mean that he doesn't – support keep like everyone just being themselves and stuff it just means like that's not his preference you know preference, which is a big thing no it, yeah. it, this is what kind of pisses me off about the whole thing is like sexual preference is a prejudice that we have held for all of time you are allowed to pick who you do and do not want to sleep with you should be allowed to do that too you know yeah but it, it almost feels like okay all right I'm going to say this because I don't want people to be like, yeah, no. Pedophile is – being a pedophile is wrong, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah not, but animals are off the table. I'm talking about if you're grownups, you get to pick – you get to – it doesn't matter if they're black, white, Asian, you know, Hispanic, anything, or a man, woman, um, non-binary, the other genders. It doesn't matter. You should be able to pick preference and have that prejudice to yourself. And to say that because someone has a preference and what they like and what they don't like, like let's, I don't know if I want to say this, but I'm going to. Let's say someone likes fit people, right? Yeah. It's not fat shaming if they don't like people who are overweight. Okay. Yeah. Don't no, call, no, for sure. Don't go up to someone and call them obese to their face. If you care about them, maybe you can push them to have a healthier lifestyle, but don't, don't fat shame them. But to have a sexual preference and an attraction preference has been so crucial to humanity for so long that we have to allow it. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, I mean, even just, um, I, I like, like the body, uh, the, the um, fat shaming example you use, because I feel like that's like more of a easy ground to tread if we got to discuss it. But just some people don't like super skinny people, you know? But there's some people that have like a preference for that or like there's some people that like uh, really chubby partners. And if you like that, that's fine. But if you're, for example, a super skinny person, and you prefer that, then that doesn't mean that you have like, like you were saying, it doesn't mean that you're fat shaming or that you're fat phobic or 
yeah like nowadays if your preference doesn't line up with something you hate it and or according to to people you if you don't if it's not your preference you hate it you're against it you don't support it it's just it's yeah it's messed up there's no way to go forward with like i feel like a mentality like that where everything's just like oh this person is doing this out of hatred instead of uh, I don't know, the countless other reasons something could be done. You want to know why I love this podcast so much? Is that yeah. these conversations, like long intellectual, they don't even have to be intellectual, but long conversations with one person, we don't really get that a lot. You know, we don't get these. And, and a lot of the conversations that come out in this need to be had, you know? Like yeah. you learn so much having, especially with regards to this whole cancel culture. Like somebody could clip me in this entire episode or on any of my podcasts and try to cancel me, right? But these conversations, if we keep doing that, these conversations that need to happen to push our society forward will not happen. And we need strong, I'm not saying I'm strong or a leader, <laughs> like I don't wanna be a leader, I'm not a good leader, I'm just a guy who likes to talk, but we need strong people to have these hard, hard conversations so that we can have leaders in the future. That's what in a presidential, United States presidential debate used to be. Now it was just too, old idiots yelling at each other like it was so yeah. stupid we used to have american society was built around strong hard intellectual debates like that's how slavery was abolished that's literally how it was a long long debate in the house of representatives now i'm not saying we've got we're, we're way past that racism and or we're way past slavery you know the racism of slavery but you know, these the, the hard conversations of progressiveness versus conservatism, really, really. And having these conversations hard, no matter, someone's going to get offended. That's the point of having hard conversations is that so someone, someone needs to be offended because that means you're talking about something that matters, you know? Yeah, and, and, and people just need to be more open to the idea of through conversation, people's mind can change. Like, just personally, like, you sometimes I'm like halfway through a sentence. I'm like, Oh, now saying this out loud. Like, I don't think I believe this anymore. Like just, uh, yeah. Like through, through conversation, people can just, people can grow, but I feel like a lot of people don't want to believe that people can grow. It's easier to be like, you're a shit person and I'm going to believe that. And there's no retribution instead of like, Hey, let's discuss how I feel wronged or i feel offended and you can tell me why you feel i shouldn't be offended or just have some type of discussion instead of just like everyone shouting at each other throwing things like just yeah there's this i don't know what people are trying to accomplish without conversing like you don't have to even change someone's mind if you can just like tell them like share your perspective or like yeah you don't like every conversation someone doesn't need to get like like their morals don't need to have change or anything but you can just like give this person an insight into like your struggles or what you have had to deal with and then that person can now take that and they're like oh shit i might have done things in the past where i didn't think how it affects this type of person or yeah just conversations are important <laughs> Imagine if what would happen if you went into a conversation or everyone went into a conversation thinking, what is this? What am I wrong about here? You know, thinking they're wrong. This is a big argument that Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson, all these guys have. It's like going to a conversation thinking you're wrong, you know, or going to a conversation open-minded and then share. I try, I've, you know, I've tried for really long on this podcast to keep it engaging and to keep it, my opinions aside on controversial topics. But then I realized listening to Joe, Joe Rogan's one of his last podcasts with the philosopher that, you know, I, if I'm going to grow, I'm, I have to disagree with the people that I'm talking to. And I have to disagree on a level that I am wrong at. Cause I have a lot of intellectual debates about cancel culture and just things in general that I don't agree with people on. And those are the, the days that I grow the most, right? And so what I'm trying to do now is shift it, this podcast into a way where I share my opinions and also 
listen, really listen. I, that's something that's really, that I've learned is to really listen to the other person and really think, well, what does this person have to offer me, you know, in, in my own growth as a person? Yeah. No, no. Like, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Cause also just <laughs> Joe, Ro- Joe Rogan's just a, just a funny example. I like, uh, you, you like, like you can have wrong opinions. I feel like, um, just taking Joe Rogan, for example, like people's opinions just makes them who they are at the end of the day. And um, again, if it doesn't hurt anyone, that's, that's perfectly fine. Like you can believe what you want to believe. Like I'm trying to just string my thoughts together here, but um, like personally, I feel like in most conversations I can debate both sides. Like I'm not, for the most part, I'm not set on any ideology and I feel like I'm always open to my ideology being changed. Like everything, like every conversation I have changes how I enter the next conversation. Does that make sense? It does. You know, I love talking to you too, because you just flow with me. A lot of, I, the cool thing about this podcast is people don't understand the structure that I try to keep it on, but I, I have, there's like, Oh, you keep it engaging. It's like, well, it's, it, you, you learn, like we were talking about, you learn how to converse with people by conversing with people. Yeah. Um, it's a big Joe Rogan thing that he says too. It's you just learn how to do this when you do it. Uh, but you, you just, you flow and you're, you have such a different mindset because you're so, from so somewhere so different than I am. And it's cool to talk to people like you because not only are you so different from me, like you, you're an animator, you're a director and I'm a podcaster, football player, but you're also very alike with me in, in so many ways, not our skin color or we're straight and white, like nothing like that. But like the way we think, you know, we grew up yeah, in yeah. very different parts of the world, met each other, didn't even really meet in person, but met each other over um, the internet in December. And like, we have a lot in common. So it's really cool yeah. to see that and to see that dynamic, you know, and just see you have this, this openness to the way you present yourself. It's awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. No, like also in conversations, I just tend to go on like tangents or rambles where I end up at like a point where I'm like, Oh shit, I have no idea where I was going with this, but I'm excited to find out. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think also just like the internet in general has a big part in that where different people from different countries nowadays, like have same ideologies, like people just like, even like artists and stuff where back in the day, they might've been more afraid to press certain, uh, what do you, what would you say? Like certain just ideals where nowadays artists are very involved in culture and just uh, record labels don't really have their thumb on what artists say or do as much as they used to. And I feel like that just, gets the message across internationally where uh, like third world countries, for example, that have struggled with a lot of homophobia or something. Now artists like Troy Sivan or something would come out and then they're like, Oh, this is fine. We never knew these things were fine because what we've been taught and what we've grown up thinking like, yeah, I think just having access to, so much more information and so much more just people's experiences and people's thoughts and things just like really shape people differently than it would have if you just grew up in your own space with your own like culture and your own uh, beliefs and things like just being exposed to more things helps you grow. Definitely. And the internet See, we always talk about, like, did you watch The Social Dilemma? Yes. <laughs> so we, the, we know about those. And there are a lot of bad things at social media. But I've found, like, now I, I occasionally I, I find myself, like, oh, why didn't this get more likes or something like that? I'm like, shut up, Colin. You're doing this for, you love it. But then I, but most of the time, especially Instagram and um. I just hit like contact people all day long, you know, and talk about them coming on the show. And, you know, I meet so many, you, you are one of the people that I met online. And so I love it to death because I wouldn't have had this show. I wouldn't have been grown into like more mature person. Than I am today. I can always grow. And 
you know, I, I love it because the, and the internet 1000% created the person I am today. 1000% had a, had a causation. And, and so, you know, we got to give the devil it's due, you know, you gotta, you gotta give, you gotta give the devil credit where the credit's due. Yeah, no, for sure. Because a lot of people tend to make out social media as like, it definitely has a lot of negatives, but I feel like social media isn't as much of the devil as people always make it out to be. Like there's, I feel like so many people who have, they might've been suicidal, but they found someone that they can talk with or they just, they were super antisocial, but they've made some friends online or they've, learn something new that they've always wanted to do or like the the internet if used properly it can just be such a tool for your future your career or just personal growth in general like i've learned that if you do something that you love regardless of the outlook you're you're winning because I, my show has, has been doing well and it's growing. It, I mean, it's not as big as like the sh- I, what I want it to be, you know, but that's the, that's the game, you know? Um, yeah. But I love doing it and it changes me and, and it, and like, I love it. And so regardless of if the show goes anywhere from where it is right now, yeah, I will, all about- no, I was just going to say, I am forever grateful yeah no like like you're saying like it's all at the end of the day it just comes down to it you're doing it for that personal fulfillment you're doing it because you enjoy doing it and also if you try and rush it to the top you're not going to enjoy that like journey as much and like when you get to the top it's going to be like oh shit i i blew up that's the story but it's so much more rewarding like internally to be like oh gosh for so long i was just doing the thing it wasn't going anywhere and then slowly it started just like building and that's how I am where I am today. You know, just like there's beauty in the process. <laughs> I, there's beauty in everything, man. It, back, going back to like our mind conversation, like it, I, I'm a big proponent. It's always about your outlook. Your life's never as bad and it's never as good as you think it is. But being looking at it good is always better, you know. Like, if you think your life is this perfect thing, when you you're naive, and if you when you once you get hit with tragedy, real tragedy, a death, your sickness, yeah. someone you love, sickness, you're gonna be hit with a wave, and you're not gonna have the, for a religious metaphor, you're not gonna have the ark built. But if you're like Noah, and you're preparing yourself, preparing your mind, building that ark for when the storm does come, the flood comes, and you're prepared, then you'll be the one who's on the ark floating away when tragedy does strike. And so keeping that mindset strong, but also internally grateful. That's, I think that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Like um, just that, yeah. Being prepared and just not tricking yourself into thinking your life or every, everything is perfect. Cause there's always, there's always room for improvement. There's always room to, be a better person and just just a different uh almost kind of topic change but like i feel like a healthy habit and a healthy routine is also like such a good path to like a healthy mindset and just like if you're in a good routine it's also just going to be so much better for you mental health wise and stuff when like a tragedy or something does hit uh just for you to be more prepared. Like, uh, yeah. Like I've noticed like if you have unhealthy habits, whether it's like unhealthy sleep pattern or unhealthy like eating routine or something, that also is just like so detrimental to your like mental health at the end of the day, which also just affects how you react to certain um, events and things like that. One of those things is uh, porn. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. familiar of the no fat movement uh no so it's like no fat is fapping it's like it's like not um it's anti-masturbation basically i think porn is very destructive um i don't think masturbation is destructive i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about this for a second i think especially yeah, as a not man, con- <laughs> clear what, what no is it what is it called it's a clear um, uh fuck 
I can't think of the word, but basically like post nut, like yeah, 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 po- clarity, yeah. post nut, yeah, yeah, post nut, <laughs> yes. Listen, you should be masturbating. You shouldn't, you, not you shouldn't. You should be masturbating. You need to go jerk your dick. <laughs> no, but you should be like, if you're horny and you don't have a girlfriend or you don't have a significant other, you're seeing jerk off dude because like you don't especially as a man i'm seeing as a man you don't want to be sitting there like this is joe Rogan said this too, you don't want to be sitting there just fucking jittering dude you, yeah being, being horny is so annoying and like, you can't think about anything else so jerk off get that clarity but if you're doing if you're jerking off to porn two to three times a day you know and you and you hate yourself you know and and you get this spiral of watching stuff you don't even want to watch and things like that you got to really stake a step back because it's, it can happen real fast. And so there's a healthy medium. It's the same thing with any drug, really. It's that dope. Yeah. It's like, are you drinking every night because you hate your life? Or are you going out and having drinks? Or when you're off, you're like, yeah, I'm going to have some drinks because you, you know, you want to. It's the same yeah. thing. Everything in moderation, including moderation. Yeah. So, and I just, Sorry. No, no. I was just saying, so don't jerk your dick off too much. <laughs> jerk your dick off. Yeah, and but like porn, like a porn addiction or something like that, I feel like can go so much like um, more intensely than like a drug addiction, for example. Because I feel like as humans, we all just crave like that physical, like physical attention, or just like having that physical bond or something with someone. That's why I feel like a lot of people like act on it in the wrong ways and then that's why they're fucking in jail or something but it's such a it's such a strong human or just even animalistic thing where it's like if you don't control it or you don't um if you're just not like consciously aware of like your urges i guess like it could get super easy to like completely get wrapped in what like what you were saying like a fucking porn addiction or something and now you're jerking off to some weird shit you weren't like you're not even into but you're like oh this is the only fucking interaction i'm getting or something like that i don't know you get some really weird people man especially like like bestiality that's a weird thing like at what point do you like People don't love me, but I'm sure animals will. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think you said, like, we crave that attention so much. I think there's only one other thing that um, is can be, like, on the same level that of addictionness, like you said, of, of, like, what porn can be or, like, sex addiction. And that's eating. You can get yes. really wrapped up in eating addictions. I, myself, have struggled with overeating because I love it so much. Like, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like overweight. I have a little bit of a gut, you know, but I work out a good amount, but I overeat. I eat when, so if there's food, especially like pasta or like, like, like fries or I love food, you know? And so yeah. I find myself on night or chips, dude. I love chips. I'm not really a sweet guy, but I love salt. Oh yes. Savory can, stuff's the best. Dude, I can find myself eating an entire bag of Lay's barbecue chips or like just Lay's chips in a night if I don't stop myself. And I'm like, bro, that's – and it's that it's that, a, that desire, man. It's that dopamine rush. It's like, oh, I need food. I need food. And so those are the only two that I really know is like sex and porn and eating that can really – like your mind needs it. Your mind needs it, literally needs it. But you can, it's really easy to step over that line and get to a point where it's over. Yeah, and like food addiction, I feel like actually now that you've mentioned it, could probably be like the worst one because we tell ourselves, oh no, it's fine because it's just food. We need to eat. Like, and that's where it's like, like I mean, with drugs and like porn and stuff, you're like, oh, like I shouldn't be doing this. This is bad. Whereas with eating, you're like, oh, I should be eating. If I don't eat, like that's unhealthy. And then it can, you can get wrapped up in like stress eating, like, I feel like as as humans, we're just always like such fans of escapism. We're just always looking for something to like relieve the stress or take our mind off of our long day or our boring day. Or there's just, if there's something to get addicted to, humans will do it. (laughs) And 
there's another thing that goes along with overeating and that's not eating at all. You know, it, for they think they're fat. Now, fasting. I'm a big proponent of fasting, intermittent fasting. I'm fasting right now, technically. I mean, I had a bang, which isn't good for my health, but I'm, I haven't ate. I like fasting until the afternoon. Sometimes I do prolonged fasting because it tests my mental like strength and it also tests my um, like body's ability because we don't need food. Like I said, I overeat. We don't need this food. But if you're, if you think your body image is bad, body dysmorphia, and you're actually skinny, you're under eating anorexia, bulimia, things like that. Under eating is a problem. It causes anxiety. It causes depression. You need to be eating good greens, proteins. And when you're not eating enough, it really can cause problems just like overeating. Yeah, no, for sure. Like personally, I, I wouldn't say I'm anorexic or bulimic, but I definitely, I have the opposite of overeating issue where I, I have a very bad just eating habit of like, I'll eat like three burgers and then I won't eat again for the rest of the day, you know, or I'll skip meals and then have like a protein bar or something. But it's just like, I can definitely see what you mean of like not eating as well is, is such a, you sometimes you'll feel drained or something like that. But it just comes back to, like I was saying earlier, that like healthy habit. Like I've been trying to just like be conscious of like, okay, the, what I'm doing now isn't healthy. I should start like doing three meals a day, getting some more exercise. Because once you like, if you don't eat, you don't have energy, you know? Um, and again, like, I'm not saying like I have it bad or anything. I'm just like, I skip meals sometimes <laughs> because I work too much or I just like forget about eating. But um, I've seen some people that have like real issues where they, after eating, they'll go like throw up or they'll like just exercise like an ungodly amount after eating just because they have that body dysmorphia of like, oh, I don't want to get fat, which is, yeah, I can see how that can be just like super destructive. Because if you also don't, if you're not getting those nutrients and things like your organs and stuff, just, I mean, over time, it's just going to deteriorate and shut down. Um, so yeah, no, that's also just such a, such an issue. But again, I'm not saying I have like anything nearly as bad. I, I just like, I skip a meal once or twice because of just being busy or forgetting, not like actual eating disorder or anything. No, I get it. And, you know, I've, I've known a good amount of people who have struggled with, like a lot of people in my life, struggled with they can't eat unless they smoke. Um, I don't know if you like marijuana, obviously. I don't oh, yeah, yeah. know any people like that, but that is the tough one. Um, because, you know, mar we always think of marijuana as this thing that helps, but it, it, it can become addicting. I've known people who are addicted to marijuana. I've known it. Um, like, like that is addiction. They can't sleep. They can't eat if they don't smoke. And it's like, dude, it comes back to that problem. It's like we humans crave sleep we crave eating we crave sex we crave touch we crave love no and today's age with internet and you know everything it's really easy to fuck up on at least one of them you know really yeah bad sleep schedule it's really easy to eat like shit it's really easy to overeat under eat it's really easy to not work out when in the past yeah, like no. if you didn't work out which is at, like you didn't eat you didn't hunt. If you don't go get something, you did not eat. So yeah, like it went hand on hand. If you wanted to eat, you had to exercise to hunt. And what is your stance on hunting? Uh, I I want to start doing it because especially things like deer, when there's an overpopulation, it's more humane because they're going to get eaten by a bear. They're going to starve to death. So if you hunt them, a bullet is way more of a humane death than a getting eaten by another bear alive starving you know or disease like dying work i hate i don't hate my i'm i have a lot of debates with people who are vegetarian and vegan i have nothing against that but i don't like when people tell me that i'm a, a horrible person because i eat meat because we are part of the food chain we we yeah. ate meat if we if we didn't want to eat meat if we weren't supposed to eat meat we wouldn't have been made to eat meat you know yeah, no, for sure. And I, but I feel like um, I also feel the same. Like, I feel like 
with hunting, for example, like if it's done right, there's no, like if you use the meat and you like just, if you're not just shooting it for the trophy and you leave it there, I, that's messed up in my eyes as well. If you're just like, you're shooting the animal just to cut the head off and hang it on your wall. But I mean, if you're actually going to like use the meat and you're just going to like it, and just meat in general as well. Like, I feel like there's proteins and things in it that you just like, your body needs. Like, like you were saying, like if we weren't supposed to eat it, we wouldn't have. That's why certain plants and certain animals and insects and things are poisonous so that we don't eat them. But the things that aren't, I mean, like, fucking 100, 200, 300 years ago, no one was like, oh, we shouldn't eat meat. It's bad for meat. <laughs> like, we shouldn't eat animals because it's bad for the animals. Um, but again, I do also see how it could be bad if it's done in like a, um, just like a over like I'm struggling to find the words, but just like if it's done like too much, you know, like um, f farming, for example, if there's just like too many animals on a small piece of land or something like that, like I can see how that's bad for the animals, you know, but at the end of the day, I love my steak. I'm not going to stop eating steak, dude. Steak's the best. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, man, I think that's a good way to end it. Thanks for coming on the show again. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Yeah, man, no, for sure. Um, we should definitely do it again. Uh, not not wait like a whole half a year this time. Yeah. But but even like I was joking like my last, uh, or the animation that I dropped this week, I also like, I started working on it about the time we did the last podcast. And I've just been like working on it. And then I'm like, oh, I had not less to work on it. And then I come back and then, yeah, just like oh, this year's already just been so crazy. But we should definitely have a chat again. Definitely, man. There's every every time I talk to you, it's a lot of fun, and we we go into a lot of different subjects, and we <laughs> and we think, and we and, and it's and it's beautiful. So I want to thank you again. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me.